Good morning, everyone. Thank you for attending our session about what's um, behind the 8K video streaming at Cloud Age. Well, um, I hope you can enjoy our session as well as the splendid uh, scenery in Berlin. And uh, I'm Jinghua, and, I'm, uh, and my English name is Coco. Um, I will give this presentation with Chang Zhi and Shao He. While I and Chang Zhi are the, both the staff researcher from the Novo Research, Shao He is a cloud engineer from the Intel. Uh, um, today we are going to talk about 8K video at the age. Um, firstly, we will introduce the background of 8K video. Then we will elaborate our age-optimized architecture, which is based on the Starlink project. Next, we will focus on our work and the work we have done uh, uh, to meet the 8K video requirements, and followed with the demo and the summary part. Uh, um, You know, Berlin is a magical city, and two months ago in Berlin IFA Consumer Technology Show, it tours 8K, video, 8K TV that capture the headlines. Big TV manufacturers like LG, Samsung, and the Chinese manufacturers, TCL, all launched their uh, 8K uh, TVs. Um, and the conception of 8K can trace back to 2012 or much earlier, and in the uh, these years, and you can um, uh, uh, the news about 8K 8K can be uh, seen everywhere. Like uh, in August 2006, NHK kicked off the uh, their first 8K satellite broadcast, and uh, in March this year, Alibaba released their 8K video cloud solution. Oh, and I think the most uh, well-known one must be that Tokyo Olympics will be held and will be shot and broadcast in, eight, in 8K. So we heard a lot of news about 8Ks. Um, what make me think that? Um, what is 8K and uh, what kind of features that 8K have? Uh, the answer to this question may be much simple if we, uh, if we compare 8K with other resolution. And the table on the right compares, um, uh, compares those at five dimension. And the first dimension is the, vi vi uh, is the resolution. 8K refers to any screen or display that a width is around, uh, width is around 8,000 pixels. And so it's four times of 4K and 16 times of the Full HD, or we call it 1080p. And, um, you can tell from the, uh, from the uh, left picture that the 8K resolution display, uh, displays higher picture quality. As for the audio channel, 8K Ultra HD supports 22.2 degree of um, uh, audio channel uh, rather than the 5.1 uh, channel of 4K. And the 100 degree of viewing angle empowers the user to catch every free and enjoy their video with immense sense. As for the coding format, 8K used, um, 8K used uh, H.265, or we call it HEVC, or VP9. Not for the uh, network bandwidth, to, trans to transmit 8K of 112 FPS network bandwidth need to reach um, 120 Mbps. Uh, while for the um, HD and the 4K, the, the number is much smaller. Great features at, as 8K have, no doubt it offers even stronger sense of um, presence and, real, and the realness to viewers. Hence, is the usage of 8K may be well-rounded. One common usage is, uh, in, com uh, is, in, consumer, uh, is in commercial TVs. Uh, others like the immense video applications, such as panor uh, panoramic video and virtual, uh, and virtual reality. Also, in real-life applications, such as um, the healthcare and the high pre um, precision monitoring, uh, in, 
In the remote health care, uh, in the remote health care with 8K resolution, doctors can see the internal structures of body uh, of the blood vessels and the boundaries between the cancer issues and the normal issues. Also, the uh, and also the tiny um, satyrs, uh, which are uh, very difficult to see even with the naked eyes. And the high um, and the high monitor uh, high precision monitoring is needed in the crowned areas like street and airport. To use 8K features, uh, we must first cope with the challenges that 8K video may bring. And the first challenge may come from uh, and the challenges may come from every uh, process procedures from the camera side to the end user. And the first challenge is the difficult. To the difficulty to manage uh, the cameras in the coming smart city eras, um, because most of the cameras will be placed uh, uh, separate and uh, far away from data center. A statistics from the uh, Nvidia shows that uh, be, um, believes that there are one billion cameras worldwide by 2020. And the second challenge came from the moral, uh, came from the more parallel computing of the uh, main coding format of 8K video, like HEVC or VP9. And the third one is when using deep learning or machine learning models to analyze 8K video, it poses a heavy load on data processing because of the high resolution. And the fourth challenge came from the transmission of 8K video. Uh, which uh, which uh, need one, uh, 120 or 50 Mbps. To cope with these challenges, first we need to uh, we need our edge computing technologies, which provide the high bandwidth, high bandwidth and low latency. And based on that, we need the different accelerators to empower the deep learning or machine learning models. Um, and the video codec algorithms. Also, we need to manage the device and the topology of different separate, separated uh, age clusters. So that's why we came up with our age optimized architecture. And in the video scenario, it's suggested that we pro, um, process the video that um, at the age, then send the result to the data center. So we use OpenStack in the data center. And in the age side, we utilize X project because it was a very scalable and, and development-ready age, uh, age solution. Um, and it provides fault management, host management, service, man service management, and so on. And that's uh, what we need. But how we cope with the remaining challenges, to, um, such as the, uh, the accelerator management, or, the, uh, or to how uh, can we manage the topology of different kinds of device? I will introduce Zhi and Shaohe to elaborate that. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Chang Zhi. I am a staff researcher at uh, Lenovo Research. In this slide, let me talk about our edge computing solution architecture. Uh, it contains two parts. One part is cloud computing in data center, and the other one is edge computing. In our OpenStack platform, uh, we manage physical networking infrastructures by our internal project. In this project, we can see the network topology and operate switches and servers. I will explain you how it works in next part. At Edge, we use Starling X as Edge infrastructure software platform. Beyond Starling X, we do something more on it. First thing is physical topology management. The second thing is eight devices management. We need, we need to manage the life cycle of different Windows devices and monitor them. I will give you a detailed introduction in the next part. The third thing is that we use Cyborg to manage our accelerators, such as GPU and FPGA. Xiao He will, take a, will talk about it later. Both in cloud computing and edge computing, they bring together technologies like Ceph, DBDK, SRLV, and some accelerators. 
both in data center platform, uh, both in OpenStack platform and the StarlingX, we are using Ceph as our storage backend. We have done a lot of optimization about the Ceph performance, such as Erasure code, online upgrade, and date constant enhancement. Um, this part, I will give you a detailed description about physical topology management, devices, edge devices management, and accelerators. First, let me show you our physical topology management project. Both in data center and uh, edge side, we can manage our physical topology. At the beginning of the uh, physical topology management in edge, it will be registered to the data center as an uh, edge cluster. Data center will store edge clusters information such as clusters, switches, servers, and links. One data center can own several edge clusters, and every edge cluster will report its status to data center. Um, this project consists of API server and the topology process. API server is the entry of APIs. It receives HTTP requests and command line requests. API server returns topology data from DB. Topology process get topology information by using SMP protocol. We need to set the IP address range of switches before start the topology process. At the beginning of topology process, it will scan all IP addresses which we set before. After scanning, we can get these active IP addresses next. We can connect them and get LLDP information by SMP, SNMP protocol. Additionally, uh, if the network topology is changed, this project can detect the change within a few minutes. How does this project work? Briefly, we enable LLDP feature in switches and installed LLDPD precise in servers. So we can get the whole network topology by running LLDP protocol between switch to switch or switch to server. At last, we use SMP protocol to get the LLDP information. So we can get detailed information about the switches such as software, version, system name, interfaces, interfaces status. As for our edge devices management, just like Neutron LBUS, Neutron FWAS, edge devices management is a pluggable project. We will design some abstract interfaces and a different vendor who wants to use this project need to implement their own driver. Next, we will design camera common plugin and sensor common plugin to fit uh, cameras and the sensors. Additionally, new, device, new edge devices will be registered into this service and uh, we can monitor the, this service, the, uh, these devices. Uh, good morning, this is Shao He from Intel Cloud team. Now let me introduce some hardware and its management in Visual Cloud. Now Intel is unleashing innovation in Visual Cloud. It is a total solution in different scenarios, such as media processing and delivery, media analytics, immersive media, cloud graphic, and cloud gaming. Include encode, decode, inference, and uh, render. Uh, this is a uh, media an analytics uh, pipeline. It should go through decode, inference, and uh, encode process. The Visual Cloud is a full stack, include hardware and software. The hardware covers different domains in computing storage and networking, such as Zenyang processor, VC card, IPG card, open persistent memory, graphic card, and Movidas. The software includes different tools in encode, decode, inference, and render, such as media, server studio, WebRTC, 
open window, media display, SDK, and uh, other render tools. Besides these tools, leverage AVX512. WebRTC can also leverage VC card, and open window can also lever, uh, leverage FPG. Now let's see how this hardware power 8K video processing. This is Intel Zenyon scalable processor. All Zenyon processors support AVX512. With mesh architecture, it delivers low latency and high band length among core memory and I.O. controllers. Just performance of video stitch, including transcoding, will be greatly improved. This is the opening family, include DC participant memory and SSD. They are high performance in bad ones, LPS and latency. You can see it's more faster endurance and denser than conventional storage medium. This is the Intel FPG. The new product, product is Stratic 10. It supports high floating point performance, high speed transceiver, high bandwidth for parallel memory interface, useful in inference and HPC. This is QAT. It provides hardware accelerations for computer intensive workloads, such as data storage and transmission. It supports 100 GBS cryptography and 100 GBS data compression. <coughs> this one is a smart card, a smart NIC. It's used for network acceleration. Currently, it supports 225 Ethernet. It supports full open V switch acceleration. It is programmable and easy to deployment. Here is the standard of some accelerators in upstream. Now we have support FPG in Cyberger. With Cyberger, we can discover FPG and program it. And I think we have seen the Cyberger FPG demo in the keynotes. The QT crypto and compressor already supporting itself. Percent memory spec is under review in NOVA. And we are supporting persistent memory for read and write cache in Ceph. Libor supports VNAI, the new ISA for inference. Kubernetes has already supported QAT. GPU and FPG. All FPG GPU QT plugin can be run as the daemon set. All these accelerators can be shared by multi-pods. For FPG, it supports two modes, AF and region mode. But it does not support image management. For QT, it needs to Preload and configure DPDK driver. Preinstall and configure quick assistant technology software. So let's see Cyberger. Cyberger will support more management for these accelerators, such as dependent software management and FPG image management. The community are trying to make integration with Kubernetes. There will be a Cyborg Master plugin running Kubernetes Master and a Cyborg Node plugin running Kubernetes Node. All these are containerized. And leverage customer resource definition to extend Kubernetes to support 
um, all these accelerator function. Okay, that's all for me. It's time for demo. Okay, before the video demo, let's take a look at the environment. We have a data center side and one, uh, and one edge cluster. The data center is managed using the Syn Cloud OpenStack, while the edge node have one GPU and, uh, a cam and the cameras and other devices connected. Okay, uh, let's start our demo one. It's a short movie. <clears throat> um, first, first, log our SyncLot OpenStack product. After, after that, let's go our physical topology page. A few seconds later, uh, we can not only see the data center physical topology, but also get the edge clusters Topology. At the data center, at the data center, we can see the switches and the servers, and their information such as system and uh, running status. At the edge, we can also see the switch and the server, and their information uh, such as system name and running status. At the edge, we can also see the switch and the server. Additionally, we can uh, see five devices from different window uh, with different color which attached to the server. So this is we have done in physical topology management and uh, we still have a lot of work to do. Uh, let's show our demo two. Okay. Uh, this de uh, this video is going to demonstrate uh, have two groups of compa comparison, and the first uh, we compare um, we compare the um, the vi uh, the video pro uh, process. We compare uh, in uh, the process uh, to accelerate uh, 8K video. Um, so not, not only the uh, not only the encoder uh, decode process, but also the detection process. So uh, the, this video uh, is going to dem uh, demonstrate that uh, our our. So we first check the uh, the resolution of the our video using the FM pack, and then we ch change to the dark night. And the dark night is a very uh, is a neural network uh, framework, and which is uh, and we also use uh, we also use you know you know is used for object detection. So um, uh, we check uh, we check the you know config to, and uh, see different parameters. Uh, the, uh, this video where um, you can see the people from uh, from left to the, to the right. Um, after we use GPU to encode, after we use GPU to uh, in, uh, decode uh, as well as detection, it's much faster than the rest. And the mid, the, the mid, the video in the middle, uh, we decode, we decode using CPU and and uh, 
use GPU to detection. Uh, because, uh, in, uh, and it is, um, and this way is utilized by the dark, dark net code uh, right now. And uh, in, the, in the right, uh, it's uh, the process of using all G CPU. So we find that FPS of uh, all, all GPU is at 25.4. And, the, and in all CPU scenario, uh, the people are almost uh, stable, uh, uh, static. And the FPS of the, uh, of, uh, of the middle video is 10.4. And for the old CPU, it was, it was very small, yeah. And here we, uh, um, as, and this is another compa uh, comparison um, because we use a, as, because we use the 8K uh, video as the input, as well as use the 1080p video as the input, and we uh, get the output after running the dark night and uh, compare uh, these two uh, these two videos. First, check the also check the resolution. And we um, we using the dark night, we get the output video. Also, the output video for 1080p. And, uh, and, and the video at the top is, uh, is we using the object detection for the 8K video. And the video in the left is the output of we using uh, 1080p video to, uh, to do the object detection. And you can see there are more details and more objects uh, have been tagged for, um, um, than the, uh, from, the, uh, from the top of the video. So let's go back to the slide. And this is uh, some information about the object detection. We use Dark Knight and the Uno V3. And we also do comparison, uh, two group of comparison. So this, uh, this session, we are talking about our age-optimized architecture based on Stalin X. Um, and we, um, and our architecture and our solution can manage a device, device and the network type, uh, topology as an as an age, and also manage a different accelerators via cyborg. And the video demo shows that and the 8K video is much more uh, can provide much more details in analysis. And for the real time analysis, that 8K video should be accelerated. Uh, in every processing procedures, not only the detection, but also the decode process. So, and uh, there's something about the future work. We want to containerize the cyborg and use the user space network stake to, our, uh, to accelerate our age networking. So, almost. So, uh, it's a QA part. Do you have any questions? Uh, if you, if all of you have any questions, you can connect us uh, by calling according the connection. Thank you. Thank you so much.